Hello and welcome back. Uh, it's the middle of winter, it's February, it's a bitterly cold but beautiful day. Sun's shining, blue sky, snow on the ground and it's a great time of year for a little project. Uh, and so today I'm going to show you how to make a raised bed. But not your ordinary boring raised bed made out of uh, planks of wood or people often use railway sleepers which will last for years admittedly but they're rather expensive. Uh, today I'm going to have a go at making something much cheaper and which I hope will make a fantastic bed for growing my uh, squashes and pumpkins this coming year. So let's have a look. So this is it. It's a straw bale uh, raised bed. Very very cheap and simple to construct as you can see. So it's uh, made from eight bales um, arranged in a rectangle obviously whatever shape you like it doesn't really matter stuck on their sides and I've put some wooden stakes in to make sure the bales don't fall over uh, they're still bound together with baler twine but eventually as they rot uh, that will be removed but the idea is I've constructed the outer walls now out of bales I, for the next couple of months I'm going to chuck all my compost and scraps, bits of vegetation into here, fill it up as much as I can, finish it off with some nice well rotted garden compost on top. And I reckon this is going to make a fantastic place uh, for growing vegetables. It's actually outside of my rabbit fenced veggie area over there, but I'm hoping the sides are sufficiently tall that my army of garden rabbits can't hop up. It probably will eventually, but I'll mainly grow things that are fairly rabbit proof. They don't touch squashes because they're too bristly and hairy. They don't touch potatoes because they're poisonous. So hopefully it'll work and we'll follow it through the year and see how it does. And here it is. We're now in early April. I spent the last couple of months every now and again putting wheelbarrows full of compost in here. Put my finest compost on top you can see that looks beautiful a bit of ash mixed in to add nutrients and we're good to go I just need to decide what I, which veggie I'm going to plant in here this year and here we are it's uh, the end of the first week of May it's planting time I've been growing up lots of um, courgettes and squashes and pumpkins and the like in the greenhouse and I'm hoping there's not going to be another frost. It shouldn't be at this time of year. Uh, and so I've started planting them out. There's a crown prince over there, a courgette in the corner, a spaghetti squash here, which is kind of cool. And a new, weird, really ugly looking blue squash variety called Marina di Chioggia, which I'm almost certainly massively mispronouncing. And hopefully they're going to fill out and fill this bed with leaves and eventually produce beautiful giant squashes and courgettes and pumpkins and all the rest of it. Fantastic. And here we are. It's the 8th of June. Things are really starting to take off. Look at these uh, squashes and courgettes. Some of them still quite small. That one at the back, that's a crown prince, I think. That uh, produces lovely big blue squashes. Uh, which are already starting to appear. I don't know if you can see, but uh, over in the back there, there's a kind of horse chestnut sized little squash that'll soon be the size of a pumpkin. Fantastic. Seems to be working. Here we are, last week of June. Look at those squashes go. Fantastic. They're going absolutely berserk. And here we are, about two weeks later, end of the first week of July. It's growing like crazy. Look, there's, there's tendrils. Woo, it's, it's spreading like a triffid. Oh, wow. Didn't expect to see that. Look, 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 look. Gorgeous little damselfly. Isn't that beautiful? Maybe you can see it there. Anyway, we're supposed to be looking at my amazing pumpkin collection. Look, there's pumpkins appearing. 
That one's uh, going to be a good size, I think. There's loads of other little ones dotted around. More tendrils flying off in all directions. Wow. Everything's thriving. Now it's the end of September. The squashes and pumpkins have pretty much stopped growing for the year, I think, and it's time to, to harvest them, which is very exciting. As you can see, the, the straw bales have more or less disappeared under this mass of vegetation, which all looks rather sad now because it's dying off, but nonetheless, things have gone amazingly this year. Some of the, 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 the um, tendrils from this plant have gone out eight or nine meters. There's some climbing a tree over there. Let me just show you. All of them are rooted in the straw bed, but uh, but right over there, I don't know if you can see that Robinia tree, uh, there's, there's, there's a squash trying to climb up it. Anyway, it's, it's there, by the way, you can see in the background too, the uh, rest of the veggies have gone pretty well this year. That's uh, the giant stuff that's about 10 foot tall is uh, Jerusalem artichoke, which is um, almost ready to start digging up those delicious tubers and roasting them in the oven with butter. But anyway, that's for another day. Um, uh, we're here to have a look at how the, how the, how the straw bale bed has performed. Uh, so I'm going to harvest, I'm going to sort through all of this lot and see how many pumpkins and squashes I can find. If you look carefully, you can see some already. Some are outside the bed. The plants have just grown all over the place. Um, so, let's see what we can find. Where do we start? Amazing. So, oh. what have we got? <laughs> We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven crown prints, which are really delicious, nutty, roasted in the oven, absolutely gorgeous, or in curries or whatever. But they've uh, got this really nice, kind of almost chestnutty flavour. The spaghetti squash, you chop in half and you can just stick them. The two halves in the oven face down sprinkle a bit of oil on them cook them for half an hour or so and then, then scrape out the insides and it's kind of like it's all it's a bit like spaghetti hence the name uh, these i've never tried before but this is an italian variety which i'll mispronounce but it's something like marina di chioggia probably got that wrong sorry anyone listening who knows anyway i'm told they're delicious and these are the the tromboncinos, which I've never grown before, but I've already eaten some. They're really rather splendid, aren't they? They're delicious. They're, you can eat them more or less like a courgette while they're still young, or you can let them harden off like this one. The skin thickens up and then you can keep them into the winter. These will all keep right through to April, May, if I keep them in a cool shed. Delicious feasts for months to come. Fantastic. Why not have a go? Make yourself a straw bale bed. And you too might have a ridiculous pile of squash and pumpkins to show for it. Take care. If you're interested in similar content, then uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, or you might be interested in some of my various books on bumblebees and insects and wildlife gardening 
and even Silent Earth, the insect apocalypse.